Uh, so what I'll do today is I'll, I'll share a fair bit of unpublished research. It's, uh, it's really a coming out moment here. Um, so this is how we think in my lab. Um, similar to many others, we like to understand why we get old. Uh, and we think that the hallmarks are part of the whole system. And we think that the loss of information in particular is, is very important. And information comes in two types in, in biology mainly. It's the DNA and the epigenome control systems. And we have a f quite a lot of evidence in the field, increasingly so, that the epigenetic noise, as we call it, and the loss of differentiation uh, is a major driver of, of, uh, of the process we call aging and illness. Um, so I'm going to talk about efforts in uh, many organisms, including humans, to slow down aging by targeting epigenetic modifiers, um, which include the sirtuins, which we uh, in Lenny's lab worked on and continue to do so. I'm going to talk about the ability to reverse aspects of aging, including epigenetic age. And I'm going to talk about what we really have talked about a lot at this conference uh, and in my lab, we are fascinated with the, um, the goal of having accurate clocks that represent epigenetic aging, if not other aspects of aging. Um, it's a bit of a complicated slide, uh, but it does cover what we work on in my lab. This was from a review back in 2008 when we published a paper that showed that not just in yeast, but in mammals, chromatin modifiers move around during aging, and that process can be accelerated by extreme cellular damage. Uh, and what we used in this case was the double-stranded DNA break, or DSB, and we used an enzyme called PPO, PPO1 to accelerate what looked like aging. Um, and I think you've heard probably me talk about this before, so I'll go quickly. But we've used this system to understand the process of aging in mammals uh, and uh, and how to reverse it. And just some some aspects I want to point out. Um, NAD is a cofactor, a co-substrate, as you know, of sirtuins. And uh, we found that upregulating SIRT1 gene expression as well as NAD levels in the cell can slow down this uh, reorganization of the epigenome and prevent loss of gene expression patterns. And we did this in a mouse back in 2008 in, in neurons in the brain. But we've gone a long way since then, or come a long way. Uh, we also, I want to report a little bit about MIB626, which is an NAD precursor. Uh, it's a polymorph of nicotinamide mon mononucleotide that uh, is uh, GMP pure. It's been in humans, and I'll update you on that and how that uh, seems to work. And our goal there is to uh, have a drug that will treat um, not just aging, but diseases of aging. And there are about, uh, I think right now we've got five clinical trials uh, up and running, and I'll share some results of that. Um, so what about the clocks? Uh, we have a, a paper that's up online. It's not yet published. Uh, this is work by Patrick Griffin and Jian Lee in my lab, two students who came up with the idea that uh, you can greatly reduce the, the cost of sequencing by uh, transposon tagging DNA samples, and we can pull 500 or more people, or dogs, or mice. Uh, and we've built some, and Patrick and Jan have built some really uh, accurate clocks for mouse tissues um, and in humans. You can see down below. Wherever I can, I, I give you um, directions to go follow up on this news. Um, these are hot off the press human clocks from Patrick. They're really great. They've got. Um, all the attributes that you'd want. This is from human blood. We have brought in over a thousand human samples from people, a uh, variety of ages, and you can see that the the uh, R values are really great. And uh, the uh, mid AE of 3.5 years is it's not bad for a first start. Uh, and this is again just half the presses. Uh, the mouse ones look really good too. And we also have phenotypic age clocks, which we've published on. If you're interested, you could check that out. Uh, how about slowing aging? Well, we've worked on activators of sirtuins for a long time. Resveratrol was the one back 20 years ago. Uh, but we've developed some synthetic ones and some NAD precursors. Uh, MIB626 is, as I mentioned, an oral formulation of a polymorph of MIB626 that's stabilized crystalline. And it's gone through a lot of safety studies over the last few years, headed by this lab, uh, Shally Basin's group uh, at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And uh, David Livingston runs the group at Metro Biotech, which is a Massachusetts-based company that's been making NAD precursors, both synthetic and natural, 
for the last decade. Uh, and, that, and full disclosure, this was spun out of my lab and others, including Shin and Mai and Raj Apta. Uh, how do you measure uh, what the effect might be? Well, one of the ways that Shelley's lab did it was to look at endurance and strength uh, within an MRI. Uh, and so this is uh, an example of the machine that they built to insert the patients into the machine and measure their endurance strength and things like uh, ATP, NAD, oxygenation. Um, and some of the data that hasn't public, been published yet, but we're starting to talk about it, and this is their group's data, not mine, uh, is that uh, a number of things happen when you take uh, 1,000 milligrams for a, roughly a month of this uh, substance uh, orally. Uh, and you can see here an example of some of the data, uh, the repetitions to failure of that leg exercise uh, significantly greater after taking MIB-626. This is similar or at least reminiscent to the mouse data that we published in 2018 on endurance in mice uh, due to increased vascularization uh, via action on endothelial cells. Um, another nice uh, bit of data, I would admit it's, it was a surprise. A nice surprise is that Shelley's group showed that um, lipids and cholesterol uh, went in the right direction for improved health. Uh, as you can see here, uh, HDL was not affected, which was also reassuring. Uh, what about acceleration of aging? Now, we do this for two reasons. One is to understand why we age, because if we can cause it, then we have some idea that we're on the right track. Uh, but we also want to know uh, if we can have a, a model of aging that's much quicker, because typical longevity experiment takes way too long. And in organoids, organoids are way too young when you build an organoid from a stem cell, an iPSC, they're age zero, which is not that useful. And so we've used this system, which you may know about. It's close to getting accepted, we hope. Uh, last, last stages of this 12-year uh, journey. Um, actually, I started this project with Philip Oberdorf when I was 39, so I've aged a little. Uh, this project is uh, the combination of 20 labs around the world um, to see if we can displace chromatin modifiers in a way that mimics aging, and we've done that, and that's this work which we call the ICE system. And we have cell-based systems and mouse systems to do that. And we'll use it in a minute, I'll show you later, but um, we can drive aging forwards as far as we can tell epigenetically, and the other hallmarks of aging accelerate as well, uh, for the most part. Uh, the reversal, this is a very hot topic, as uh, you all know. Uh, we use uh, Typically, we use a combination of three of the Yamanaka factors rather than four. We leave out CMYK, and we're using other methods, chemicals now as well. Um, we published this um, in 2020, so I'm not going to repeat that data. But we did use it to rejuvenate neurons in mice and restore vision in mice that had damaged or old retinas by targeting the neurons. Um, and we find that we need all three of those factors, O, S, and K, shown down here in this vector that we can cr control with doxycycline. We have a TED on and TED off system if you would like to try it. This isn't uh, injections in the eye, which was in the, the Nature paper. This one's the whole brain, and we're using a variety of AAVs now to infect different tissues and the whole body in, the, in efforts to not just accelerate aging, but take those mice and wild type and reverse them and see what happens. And this is work that I'm showing you from uh, Xian, uh, Xiao Tian, uh, primarily, and Jiayun Jie Yun Yang. And their goal is to reverse the age of the brain and see what happens. And uh, well, this was the paper I just wanted to remind you. And we had a lot of help from people in the field, some of who are at this conference. Uh, Morgan's here. Uh, Vadim was great help, Steve Horvath. It, there's a long list you can see here. I couldn't have done any of this without their labs as well. What was amazing about this was that we showed that there's a, a repository of youthful information that can reset a cell's epigenome. We measure gene expression on the right. You can see it's, it's nicely reset proportionally to how the genes were expressed when they were young. This is RNA. And on the left, I think even just as impressive is the methylation patterns were largely restored as well. Um, and the clock, uh, which uh, Morgan and Steve and Vadim helped us show, uh, was retarded as well. And one of the interesting things in this paper is we found that damage to neurons accelerates epigenetic aging as well. So it's not just DNA cutting um, or time, it's extreme cell stress, like a nerve crush, that can do it as well. Uh, this 
has been commercialized or is being commercialized by Life Biosciences, a Boston-based company, also spun out of my lab. Uh, you can check it out, um, and you'll probably get the website if you spell the sciences correctly. There's an E in there. Um, Life Biosciences was started in 2017. Uh, Bruce Cassander at Mass Eye and Ear has done a lot of the preclinical work and the safety work. We've now got a fair amount of data, and we're now in non-human primates with the goal uh, of some time in uh, the next 12 to 24 months of uh, starting uh, work towards an IND and getting into humans, if all goes well. And our goal is to reverse blindness in a variety of different disorders in humans. Uh, but it is remarkable if you reverse the age of neurons in the retina, you can restore vision and gene expression this way. 